Mr. Darley crying out, and I come and get you two right away. Oh, you did right, Matilda. Yeah. Daddy! Oh, please open this door. Dick, can't we break it down? He's in there. Listen okay, to man. it. Talking I man. can't yeah. break down this door. It's solid oak. When I had this house built, I insisted on it. I'm sorry about that now. Why don't the police get here? You did call them, Matilda. Oh, yes, Mr. Staley. I call as soon as I as I tell you what I hear at this door. Good. I can't stand listening to this. We've got to do something. I know. Wait, I, I look through the keyhole. Oh, yes. Well, what do you see? What do you see, Matilda? Well, I, I see Mr. Downey. He, he stands there in the middle of the room. I see his face, his neck. What about it? His neck, Mr. Staley. Yes? It is being choked by a, a gray glove. A gray glove is at his throat. Just one glove. It's choking him. What, a gray glove? Yeah. Well, who's wearing it? I, I do not know. I cannot see any arm, any body, just a glove. Well, let me look. Get away, Matilda. Oh, yes, yes, certainly. Well, Dick, what is going on in that room? Whatever it is, Ruth, it's all over now. Oh. Your father's lying on his back in the middle of the room. Oh. And there's a gray glove lying right next to him. Daddy. A few more with the axe ought to do it, Riley. Okay, T.A., Oak doors are sure tough. Stand back, Markham. Right. I'm glad I called you to come down here with me, Vance. From what I was told on the telephone, what happened in this room is pure fantasy. I'm glad you called me too, Markham. And I'm glad I got here in time to break in the room with you and our police friend here. Where are the owners of this house? I've asked them to wait in their room. Yeah. Uh, that does it, Mr. Markham. I can reach in and turn the key from here. Okay, fine. Vance. Look there. Just as Mr. Staley described it to you. Yes. A dead man and a gray glove lying next to him. Look at his throat. It's been clawed. Somebody choked him to death. But there's nobody in this room, and that door was locked. Uh, take a look at the windows, D.A. Bard? Hell, yeah, okay, Riley. Take a look around the house. See what you can find. Don't bring the family in here, though. Right. Be seeing you, D.A. Yeah. Well, Vance? Let me understand something. Mr. Staley looked through the keyhole and saw this gray glove on the floor choking the dead man? That's what he told me. The maid, Matilda, saw it too. And all three of them heard this man here repeating, It's choking me. It's choking me. Well, this is something. A man is choked to death by a gray glove. A glove that was obviously on the hand of somebody who couldn't possibly be in the room. Give you a tumble, Joe. You must be losing your stuff. Kind of nice she was. Who needs her? Ain't the fellas inside the store? You want to go in and shoot a fat? Who needs it? Besides, Sammy, I got a date. Who with? My girl. Oh, Marge. Who else? <laughs> Good thing she didn't come along when you were whistling at that dame. So if she came along, so what? So she'd see me. What is that, a crime? Not to me, it ain't. Hey, uh, tough break about her grandfather. The guy who got choked to death in this room? Yeah. Yeah, tough break. He didn't like you. Who needed him? Marge likes me, that's all that counts. Hey, scram, Sammy, here she comes. Okay. I just want to stick around, say hello. Okay. Hello, Joey. Hi. Hello, Sammy. Nice to see you. Thanks, same to you. Joey and I were just talking about your grandfather. Joey, let's... Shut up. I didn't say nothing. I just said you and I were just talking about Marge's grandfather. That's all I said. Joey, could we go... Of course, everybody knows you didn't like Joey here and was raising the roof because you used to meet him on street corners. But I wouldn't say there was any reason to kill a guy, would you, Marge? Joey, please, let's go take a walk or something. Who needs it? Wait a minute. I want this guy to keep talking. Let's go, go Joey. Go on, please. Sammy. You were saying... Nothing much. 
Just that I don't think you'd kill a guy for not liking you to go out with Marge here. Of course, he wouldn't be the first guy you knocked off, but... Oh. I need him. Let's get away from here fast, Joey. Before a crowd comes, please, Joey. Some guys talk too much. Some dames, too. You should remember that, Marge. Please, Joey. People are starting to come around. Let's get away from here. Okay, Sammy will be all right when he wakes up. Hurry up, will you? All right. How do you like that punk trying to say that maybe I killed your grandpa? The guy who'd say a thing like that is stupid. He don't know nothing. Either that, Joey, or he does know something. I've never known you to question anybody in a kitchen before. There's a man. first time for everything, Martin. Matilda. Yes? You don't have to stop washing those dishes to answer some questions. No, no. I, I don't stop. Good. How long have you worked for Mr. and Mrs. Staley? Mm, 30 years. Mm -hmm. I, I come with them when they first get married. I, I stay with them ever since. They're very fond of you. Mm. I was talking to them right after the body of Mrs. Staley's father was found in his room, and they told me how highly they regarded oh, you. Oh, they are good people. Were they happy, Matilda? Oh, yes. So happy. Well, Vance, I guess that tells us nothing. What did you want it to tell us, Markham? I was hoping your questions might shed some light on the ridiculous situation in this house. How a man could be choked to death with a gray glove which we found on the floor. Oh, that? Yes, definitely that. Mr. and Mrs. Staley heard her father cry out that the gray glove was choking him. Yet after looking through the keyhole, they could see neither body nor arm attached to the glove at his throat. There was a slight inaccuracy in your description of what happened, my friend, but uh, it doesn't matter. You see, I know how that was done. What? Yes, you... Oh, oh, I'm so clumsy. I, I'm so sorry to drop the dishes. I, I, I picked them up. Nervous, Matilda? Oh, no, I, I don't think so. It seemed to me that you were. You knocked over those dishes when Vance said he knew how Edgar Downey was murdered. Well, I, I, I'm sorry. I know. But about what? <laughs> I think, now let me see, I think it's a little tight across the shoulders, Mr. Brooks. Fix it. Uh, certainly. Uh, would you care for a little extra drape in this suit? Who needs it? Uh, but, uh, Just Mr. Brooks... Just make sure there's enough padding in the shoulders. Oh, uh, don't worry, Mr. Brooks. I'll especially see to that. Uh, you want the trousers pegged, of course? What else? Uh, uh, see that they come up high enough, you hear? Oh, oh yes, Mr. Brooks. Yes. Okay, that does it. Now, when do you want me to Joey? come... Joey, are you in there? Uh, who is that? It's my girl. What's she doing here? In here, Marge. Come on in. Joey, I've got to talk to you. So talk. Alone. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Brooks. The, the fitting was about over, you know. I'll, I'll see you Thursday. Thank you. Joey. Well, Marge? Joey, what do you think's happened? How do I know? Philo Vance is working on the murder of my grandfather. So, he's got a job. Mm -hmm. oh, send him a wire of congratulations. Joey, don't fool. This is too serious. Yeah? It isn't only that he's working on the murder, but he's found out something. Mm, lucky him. He was talking to Matilda, our cook, this morning. Oh. The district attorney was there. So? The district attorney said he wished he knew how the murder was committed, and Vance said that he knew. Oh, he did, did he? Joey, you've got to do something. This is for me. You know about Mother and Dad. Uh, what am I supposed to know about him? Well, you know how terribly they quarreled when Grandfather came to live with us. I told you that. So what am I supposed to do? Stick my neck out and get into trouble? Who needs it? Well, if Vance knows how Grandfather was killed, it's going to affect somebody I love. My mother or father or you. Oh, I get the gimmick now. You're scared. You'll think of something to do, won't you? Please. Sure, sure. I think of something. Only don't get into trouble, Joey. I wouldn't want that. I'll try not to. Okay, honey, relax. I won't be the one that gets into trouble. It'll be Philo Vance. Must we quarrel now, Ruth? Must we? I don't know. I'm so sick of arguing with you, Richard. So am I. Oh, I'm so tired of everything since what happened to my father. Right in front of my eyes. It happened in front of my eyes, too. Don't forget that. Ruth. What is it? We were so happy before he came to live with us. I'm sorry about what happened to him. You know I am. But can't we go back to our lives of a year ago? I don't know. I, I just don't know. Uh, who is it? It's me, Mrs. Staley. Matilda. Come in. 
What is it, Matilda? Oh, if you're busy, I, I come back later. Come in now. And uh, what what do you want? Please, I I, I would like perhaps to take off this afternoon, Mrs. Taylor. All right, Matilda. If you like, why it's you're all taking right. another afternoon off? Uh, yes. You're away more often than you're here. Where are you going this time? I know where she's going, Richard. Oh, you do. What's happening in this house? Why all the secrecy? Don't you think I'm entitled to know things, too? I tell you, Mr. Staley... No, no. Uh, Now, look, Richard. We're still finding things to quarrel about. We shouldn't. No? We have no real reason. Why don't we stop? Why don't I have a right to know where Matilda's going? Well, what difference does it make where she's going? It's personal. Very personal. Apparently. All right, Matilda. Take the afternoon off. Take the night off, too. Don't come back here at all. Richard. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Staley. I, I must come back here. Uh, You see, I have no other place to go. Midnight edition of the morning papers just out. Paper, mister? No, thanks, Jimmy. Oh, it's you, Mr. Vance. Hey, what's cooking? Nothing much. Just out for a little exercise before going to sleep. Oh, well, okay. If there's anything I can do for you, you let me know, will you? (laughs) All right, Jimmy. I'll remember that. Hey, buddy. You mean me? Sure, you got a match? I think so. I think I have one here. Freeze, fella. Don't make a move. Oh. Stick up? Don't you wish it was? Frankly, no. No, this ain't no stick up. Stick up would be over nice and quick. I'm going to be with you a long time. Unless. Unless what? Unless you leave the murder of that old downy guy up to the police. If you do, you'll never see me no more. That, I assure you, is a great inducement. That probably means something, but not to me. Look, Vance, get smart. You're stepping on somebody's toes. That somebody don't like it. Sent me around to work on you if you wouldn't scare off. And I'm going to do just that. You're going to work on me, are you? Yeah. Well, I assure you, it's a very interesting project. You'll have some fun. You're telling me. I'm not only telling you, I'm sh- Oh, you see it right my floor. Thanks, Jimmy, but I don't think I need you. You're going to need a doctor when I... Here I am, Mr. Vance. Oh, wow, look at him. He's out cold. Yes, Jimmy. I was out for some exercise before going to sleep. Looks like I got the exercise all right, but he got the sleep. District Attorney Markham. The gray glove murder case opened when the body of Edgar Downey was found in his locked bedroom. His daughter and her husband and their cook heard him cry out that something was choking him and through the keyhole saw a gray glove at his throat, but with no body attached to it. This, Philo Vance insists, he can explain, but he doesn't know who on our suspect list is the killer. Vance is in my office now, and I have several things to tell him. This isn't the right time to tell you how the gray glove strangled Mr. Downey, Markham, but believe me, I will, and very soon. I'll wait, in as much as there isn't anything else I can do. I'm also waiting for the autopsy, as a matter of fact, but I have something to tell you. Going to make me wait, too? No, I know you must have a reason for not talking now, but listen. Did you know that Mr. and Mrs. Staley were having serious quarrels about her father coming to live with them? No, I didn't. But it's true. Now, you take a situation of this sort. Two people who get along beautifully for years suddenly have their happiness threatened by a third person. Don't you think the husband might have killed his wife's father? No. Now, Vance. You can build that as much as you like, Markham, but it isn't a motive for murder, in my opinion. Now, the wife might have killed her father. What? Certainly. If the old man were wealthy and had left her his money... I see what you mean, but would a woman kill her own father? And how is it done? I merely offered a suggestion in opposition to yours about Mr. Staley being the killer, that's all wasn't my theory. But you do have one. Yes. You see, a rather tough character tried to intimidate me last night as I was taking a walk. Oh? I don't think either Mr. or Mrs. Staley would have hired him. And who did? I don't know. But I have a hunch whoever it was will show up, and very soon. He knows I don't scare easily now, and apparently he's worried. So am I, after what you told me. Don't be. My activities for the next hour or so are very tame. 
I'm going to take a ride with a lady. Mrs. Staley? No. Her daughter Marge, whom I know you haven't met as yet? No. I'm going for a ride with the one woman in this case who can tell me something important, if I can make her talk. The cook, Matilda. Enjoying the ride, Matilda? I like automobiles. I'm glad. You know, I like mysteries, but I don't like murders. Yeah. Nobody likes murders. I suppose that's true enough. Matilda, don't you want to know how I came to pick you up in this car as I did? No. I came down from the building. You were there. You say to get in. I get in. I had followed you to that building. It was a hospital, wasn't it? If you say so. Who's ill in there, Matilda? You, you don't know? No. I don't tell you. Matilda, don't you see what you're doing? You're a... Oh. Hey, look at that! Oh, the car! It almost pushes off the road Yes, there. so it did. Oh, my. Somebody wanted to talk to me and did it the hard way. Oh. Here he comes. Oh, my, my. How Hi. do you do that? You're a file of ants, aren't you? Yes. What's the big idea of cutting in front of me just now? My own idea. I get things like that all the time. The name is Brooks, Vance. Joe Brooks. I have a little information for you, my friend. Who needs I... it? Look, Vance, a friend of mine stopped you on the street last night. Only you stopped him. He was uh, more of a friend of yours last night because he was giving you a little tip. I thanked him. In my own way, of course. Sure you did. Anyhow, he came to warn you to lay off this murder case. You said you wouldn't do it. Now, I think you will. How wrong can a man be? You mean me? Yes. Cut the sarcasm. Who needs it? Vance, I'm not threatening you now. I'm not that stupid. Threats don't mean nothing to a guy like you. That's pretty apparent, isn't it? What's your proposition? I'm not threatening you. I'm promising you something. Duck out of this case or I promise you I'll take care of you personally. And, Vance... Yes? My word's awfully good. <laughs> Mr. Attorney Markham speaking. Markham, this is Vance. Hello. What are you doing for dinner tonight? Nothing special, Vance. Well, you are cordially invited to eat at the home of Mr. and Mrs. Richard Staley. Dinner is at 7. I'll expect you. Well, I'll be there, of course, but what's the big idea? The big idea is to get this case over with in a hurry. And tonight at dinner is when that's going to be accomplished. Oh. Who else is invited? Mr. and Mrs. Staley, their daughter Marjorie, a boyfriend of hers named Joe Brooks, who introduced himself to me in his car this afternoon... And, uh, that's all, I guess. One of them is our murderer? Someone who'll be there tonight is, I assure you of that. And that's when you'll tell me how somebody could have gotten in and out of a locked room and choked a man to death with a gray glove? I promise. Hmm. I'll be there. <laughs> May I please have your attention? As you know... This dinner was my idea. Oh, Matilda. <coughs> yes? Please stay here. You can serve the dessert later, if you will. Oh, very well. Mr. and Mrs. Staley, I wish to thank you for allowing me the use of your home, your cook, and your food for this dinner. I hope you don't mind Police Officer Riley being here. That's quite all right. We're only too glad of you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Riley. Yes, Mr. Vance? I hope you don't mind waiting. I'm used to it. Good. Now, Miss Staley... Well? You're probably wondering how I knew about you and Joe Brooks, who's sitting next to you. It's very simple. I have a newsboy friend named Jimmy. He saw a friend of Mr. Brooks pick a quarrel with me on the street and identified him for me. You checked on Sammy, found he was my friend, asked questions, and found I went with Marge. Some brain. Who needs it? I do, Mr. Brooks, very much. Now, for the first time, I want to tell all but one of you how Mr. Edgar Downey died. Oh, you mean Please. that? One of you, the murderer, already knows. The others will be very interested, I'm sure. Of Edgar Downey wasn't strangled. Oh, what? He was poisoned. Oh, but, poisoned. but that can't be. I, I heard him say, it's choking me. It's choking me. A and Dick looked through the keyhole and saw the glove at his throat. That's so right. did Matilda. Really? It was my understanding that Matilda looked through the keyhole and announced that she saw the glove at your father's throat. When your husband got to the keyhole, Mr. Downey was already falling. Well, I, I imagine that's right. Let me continue. There are several poisons that constrict the throat. 
Mr. Downey was poisoned. When the poison began to take effect in his bedroom, he instinctively grabbed his throat. When he said it's choking me, he didn't mean the glove, he meant the poison. Of course. No glove was choking him. When you get a report of the autopsy, Markham, you'll find I'm right, that he was poisoned. Uh, I don't want to inject no sour note in this, Vance, but what's with that gray glove? Joey. Joey, how did you know that glove was gray? Uh, Oh, me? Yes. I, I didn't, I... I guess most gloves are gray, ain't they, March? If you don't mind, I'd like to handle this investigation my way. Now, I want to tell you all this. The same poison that killed Mr. Downey was fed to all of you just now at dinner. What? 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 Please, everyone. The poison won't take effect for a half hour. And in the meantime, I'm sure I'll have a confession from the guilty person. The one who caused Mr. Downey's death. How are you going to get that confession, Vance? No one is to leave this room, Markham. Guilty person knows what poison was used, and I'm sure also knows the antidote for that poison. I'm quite certain there'll be an effort made to get that antidote. But suppose there isn't. What are we supposed to do? All sit around and die? No, Mrs. Staley. I've made provisions for that, believe me. Wait a minute, Vance. I can't let you do this. After all, I'm district attorney. I represent the law, and what you've done is very illegal, even though it might solve a murder case. That's right. Let me ask you something right here. Do you or don't you know who was responsible for Mr. Downey's death? Certainly I know. Now... Matilda, where are you going? I, uh, uh, just uh, out of the uh, kitchen for a minute. I, I, I come uh, back in. You're not going anywhere, Matilda. Riley, there's our murderer. What? Take her. No, right, no, Matilda no, is no, the murderer? No, don't I don't, don't, I don't get in there. Take her out, Riley. She's coming, no, whether she likes it or not. Come on, you. Vance, I don't understand all this, and I'll hire the best lawyers to defend Matilda. You won't want to after I tell you how sure I am of her guilt. In fact, I'm quite certain she'll confess when she gets to headquarters. Oh, but... uh, what about the poison that was fed to all of us, Vance? <laughs> there wasn't any poison, Markham. What do you mean? What do you do? Hey, what's with all this mixed-up business? Who needs it? You say we weren't served poison? Then why did Matilda make a break for the kitchen? Vance, what is this? I'm just as confused as everybody else is here. I don't blame you, and I'm sorry. First of all, let me tell you this. Matilda is the one who poisoned Mr. Downey. Oh, no, I, don't I thought I could make her try to leave the room on a pretext to get the antidote for the poison she thought was fed her, and I did. Well, you know so much, Vance. Tell me where she was spending all the time she took off from her work. Mrs. Staley, would you answer your husband, please? Matilda had a son who was very ill, Richard. That's why she was taking all that time off. She was going to a hospital to visit him. Oh. How did you know, Vance? I picked her up at the hospital yesterday, Mrs. Staley. Oh. Later, I went back to see her son's doctor. He told me the boy needed very expensive treatments. Then I asked him about a poison that might constrict a victim's throat. And what happened? He told me what types would. And he also told me something very important. He said that a quantity of that poison had been found missing from the hospital immediately after one of Matilda's visits. That was all I needed to know. I prepared this little dinner party, hoping that Matilda would confess. And she will, I'm sure of it. But my father never did anything to Matilda. Why should she want to kill him? What reason would she have? I think I know the reason, Mrs. Staley. What? But I'll have to wait just a little while to make sure. Vance, now, will you please explain what actually happened in Mr. Downey's bedroom when that gray glove was seen clawing at his throat? Certainly, Markham. The glove was never at his throat. Matilda said she saw it when she looked in through the keyhole. Staley looked in just in time to see the old gentleman fall over dead. That's right, come to think of it. But the gray glove, how did that get on the floor? Matilda had put it there earlier. She knew about the poison, she knew Mr. Downey's habits, and she knew how long the poison would take to work. So she went to Mr. Downey's bedroom, dropped a glove on the floor, and went out, after which he locked the door in back of her. Oh, I see what happened. The poison started taking effect. Matilda got the Staley's to the door and pretended to see the gray glove at Downey's throat. The power of suggestion was so strong that when Staley looked through the keyhole, he was willing to swear that he, too, later saw the glove at the dead man's throat. Mm -hmm. Well, now that that's explained, let's go to the motive. What was it? You will read it in Matilda's confession. Mr. Downey had left her $10,000 in his will. She needed that money for her son's treatment and begged him for it. He refused her, so she killed him. What about those attacks on you by this Joe Brooks and his friend? Joe thought he was being a gallant in protecting his girl's family by threatening me, forgetting that he too had a motive for the murder, the fact that the grandfather didn't approve of him. Who would? (laughs) You're perfectly right, Markham. In the words of Mr. Brooks himself, who needs him? (laughs) 
Well, I guess that does it, my friend. Of course, we should have known the clawing marks on Downey's throat weren't made by a gloved hand at all. Yes, we should have realized that at the beginning. It might have helped. However, it doesn't matter now that we're at the end of the gray glove murder case.